welcome to our show, PM Pong. Whoa! Whoa! What role am I supposed to play? You know, who will you be taking over the role of Chu Bing? We were supposed to last for eight episodes, but they killed us off with it. <laughs> I need to do whatever it takes to keep Andrea alive. I decided to actually put myself on the donors list. Welcome to today's show. Before we dive into the episode, we just want to share about today's painting, painting of, of the, the episode. episode. So if you don't already know, The Daily Catch-Up is a proud partner of Shaping Hearts, which is an all-inclusive arts festival showcasing works from local artists with disabilities. So today's artwork is by... It's by three people, actually. Tae oh. Yong Kang, Katie Lee, and Susan Tan. And the title of the work is Fascinating Autumn. And I think Fascinating. what's quite interesting is that Tae Yong Kang is a visually impaired artist uh, who developed his interest in painting when he joined Touch Art. And the second Second artist is Katie Lee, who is a 73-year-old female, and she too is visually impaired. She's left with tunnel vision in her left eye, and despite mm. this, she's still able to create art pieces with fine details. And uh, of course, we have Susan Tan, a volunteer who started painting after her retirement, and she essentially works together with the two artists to put their arts and create it together. So I think it's an amazing artwork. You get amazing value having three artists, of course. Very, and, um, very colourful, flamboyant colours, I might say. Yeah, and I think, I honestly think it's very beautiful. So if you would like to check out this painting in real life or maybe buy a piece of meaningful artwork for yourself and your new home beautiful home do check us out at our Tempanese Hub Shaping Hearts will be there on the 19th of October and we will also be there we hope to see you there and let's jump right into today's episode. Rising to fame after playing the comedic role of Pua Chu Bing, our Ooh. guest for today has gone on to star in over 60 TV series and films, including hit dramas like Holland V, Portrait of Home, Little Nonia, Cliff, and The Journey of Voyage. The multiple Best Actor Award winner then broke into the Hollywood scene in 2018 with Crazy Rich Asians, Ooh. one of the top 10 highest grossing rom-coms of all time. <laughs> and today we're honoured to be getting to know the man behind the actor. Welcome to our show, Pierre Paul. Whoa! 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 We have made it! Okay, yeah, thank you. So, I mean, we've had Gamit Singh on and we've had Irene Ang on. So, of course, we have to have the younger brother, what you bring on. Yes. Can you share with us a bit about how you actually landed the role? Because it was only one year after you did your first film out of NS. Mm. Yeah. The three of us, okay, the four of us, no, sorry. The three of us <laughs> serving national service would know that there's this- Wow, you know so much. I'm so that's crazy. That's crazy. No. So he's a fan of the show and we didn't believe him at We're first, still, but yeah. we are convinced yeah. I now. I am, but don't test me, don't test me. <laughs> <laughs> we don't Just even know word for it. I, I also must confess, I, I, I hate your for one thing. Nice. It's way past my bed hour and I can't stop watching. <laughs> so it's like, can you all do like half an hour? Is it crazy? Minutes? Yeah, my guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah, so uh, coming to the tail end of national service, you got leave to clear, right? So we were all in the bunk one day and then someone said, oh, they're holding auditions for a movie. Shall we all go? Mm. I said, okay, now why not? So it's one of those like, Everybody went, but then one will get it. The role, yeah. and so I got the role, and uh, I was auditioning for the movie Spider Boys to be shot by the very talented Glenn Gui. But in the end, he decided to do Forever Fever. So got to know Pam, we got to know Adrian Pang, got to know everyone there on set, uh, and they were so in the arts community already before me, and they were the ones who told me that there was a talent search called the Fame Awards because of all the scoring I got on set for <laughs> Forever Fever. I decided. I say, there's got to be more about this craft that I don't yeah. know about. <laughs> so I enrolled in an acting school, uh, in an acting class conducted by Lim Yubeng. And then I had the confidence, I say, okay, I'm going to take part in the Fame Awards. Took part in the Fame Awards, won the Fame Awards, uh, was given a one-year contract with Mediacorp, uh, TCS then. Yeah. Mm. And uh, one of the contract criteria is that I had to be on that show. And they asked me to be on Pua Chu Kang. I said like, mm. hey, is, is, what role am I supposed to play, you know? I say, oh, you'll be taking over the role of Pua Chu Bing, mm. all right? And, and taking like, over the role. Yeah, 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 taking over the role. So I'm like, wow, okay. So you didn't have to audition for the role? No, I didn't. He, he won what? the talent contest, man. I mean, yeah. yeah, so one of the first roles that they gave me was to play the brother of uh, Pua, Chu, uh, yeah. Pua Chu Kang. How much time did you have between finding out that you got that part and then playing the part? Maybe one, two weeks. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in memory so seeing right. really run and gun last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still run. Is this still contracted, is it? No, 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 but still in a, in a good way because- No, now got a lot more training. Now got a lot more training. 
Yeah. 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 But like you mentioned, because you were taking over the role from Edwin Chong, right? Yeah. So was it difficult like trying to make that character your own? Back then, you know, when you're young, you just don't really care. And <laughs> uh, I think it, it's a good thing uh, <laughs> because um, you, you're that young and you you are not afraid to make mistakes. Mm. And uh, I say, okay, I mean, how difficult can it be? You know, yeah. just, maybe I got, I got to try a little bit harder with the accent, but then... Uh, what the yeah. hell, uh, right? <laughs> yeah. The character is, is out of place anyway. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, the character changes with each episode or each theme. Mm. So I went on to set and I wasn't disappointed. I, I thought I was in heaven. We were going <laughs> for rehearsals, all right? Everyone there, like you guys, shots. And hey, we I guess you got- tables, <laughs> <laughs> I guess you no choice. <laughs> you given a choice, you're wear slippers. Yeah. It's true. This, this is the best job ever. Like. Only, <laughs> only one out of four. Okay, so getting into character, putting on the makeup, putting on the costume and when the wabi announces your name, you come out and everyone cheers, all that fear disappears. Right. It's magical. That So for me, I always contribute whatever I have achieved to where I began. Yeah, yeah. And I'm assuming yeah. it's also that immediate feedback because like you deliver a joke or you do something funny and to hear that immediate laughter is also better than just silence. Okay, laughter is easy. Well, to get the audience to, oh, <laughs> You know, like when Chukang oh. and Chubing fight, yeah, or yeah. when Amma says, I think nobody likes me anymore, I'll just leave. Then the whole audience, even though they've heard it before, mm. they still have that, right. that uh, what's that word, that unison in, in mm. that sigh, or that sometimes you can even hear people crying. So, so you mean Pua Chukang's tracks are all real from the audience? Yeah. Oh. I mean, of course, there are some canned laughter. I yeah. mean, like uh, maybe the director or the EP thinks like, Hey, why nobody laugh at this part? <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, everything was all recorded live. Wow. Right, so I right. had the best experience. I had the best introduction because it was in front of a live audience, mm. but it was also pre-recorded. So yeah. I had mm. this safety net so I, I could just be free. Mm. So who was the most intimidating? On set? Yeah. Did you mean what was the most intimidating? <laughs> oh, you're talking about that episode <laughs> where... <laughs> Where Irene came on yes. and Irene said she kept poking me from behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just, here's the thing. Irene's costume requires her to wear very pointed bra. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so not to the extent that it hurt someone, but then it's, <laughs> it's just it's just so uncomfortable because we all have to squeeze in for like a photo. <laughs> Irene says, it's okay, babe, yeah. it's okay, no problem. <laughs> there, 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 there. <laughs> I said, I need to stop it because I don't know how to react. I yeah. mean, like, do I do I take it one step for the other? <laughs> so I just I said, okay, like, stop it. Like, I, I, I really don't know what to do. Like, okay. Like. She she did mention that like she felt a lot of pressure until you came and joined the yeah, cast. You were her Mississippi. And then all the pressure was redirected. Yeah, did you were you aware of that at that time? <laughs> no, I kind of like the attention that mm. I was getting. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, actually. Yeah. No, but, but um, but it was all good. I mean, I, I think in live view, whenever something comes to you, um, you can choose to either fight it or to, I mean, stand your ground. But then at that age with, with so little experience, who am I to stand my ground? Was there any particular castmate or, or colleague during that, uh, that project, right? That, inspired you the most? I would say Gurmit. Mm. Gurmit. Gurmit, uh, bec- because back then, I tell you, everything was Pua you know, Like, if they yeah. could make a postage yeah. stamp yeah. of Pua Chukang, they would. Mm. He was everywhere. He was going to Malaysia. He was um, hosting shows. And, and he would come for rehearsals and he really like... Uh, like our friend here, like, you know, I, we got, I got to leave by four. So, he was that serious, but at the same time, he was so professional. So it, mm. it, it was tough. So I, I looked at him and I'm like, wow, I, I really admire him. I, mm. I, I, I don't know where he draws the energy from, but then this guy is really making things work. I mean, he doesn't like, hey, I mean, kick up a fuss, like, hey, why do I have to work so many hours? You know, you're not paying me enough. He doesn't, there was no diva attitude. La. Yeah, mm. he doesn't quantify stuff. He just knows. I mean, but actually all of them. La. So all of this started because you went for an audition during NS. Like what What if you didn't go for the audition? Like was acting always something uh, you wanted to pursue? I also watched that episode where- What up? I, I, I truly <laughs> believed and felt what you felt when you were in NDU. I wish I was commissioned as an officer. Mm. 
So having been put out of course, kind of like really dampened the whole like yeah. I didn't see light at the end of the tunnel. Like, wow, I'm such a loser. I, right. My whole life has just been missed opportunities. And this was like that one thing that I, I felt that I could yeah. make my dad proud. And even then, also, oh, and then she was like, the same thing. You mean, oh. how, how can you get kicked out of course? Or how can the yeah. government give you and you, you give them a reason yeah. to take it away from you? So if I had not gone for an audition because it was coming to the tail end of national service, I, I think I would have been just happy. Signing on. I would have signed on if the army didn't want me. I would have like uh, maybe just gone to the zoo and uh, scoop shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I saw that yeah. in another interview. I also want to be a zookeeper. Okay, so if we can backtrack a bit, right? I think it's quite interesting because I've done quite extensive research on mm. you, but most of the interviews that you have done all circle around the roles that you uh, you have taken on. And this is in fact your first ever podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is, so, it is, it is. Like he's done radio shows, like, but not yeah. a podcast. We are and very honored. Yeah, so very, very I think there's not you. much that Honest we know mind. about you before you took on the acting roles. Okay. So I'm a bit curious because there was another interview where you shared that some of your favorite memories came from when you were growing up in a kampong. Mm. Yes, yes. Living in a kampong, I think really kind of built my character. Uh, I come from a family of six. We were the last few to move out. I lived in a kampong till I was about like maybe 21, 22 years old. Wow. Right, so it was during where? national service. Um, you know, yeah. how old you are know you? Chucking, <laughs> you <laughs> you're not that old. You try I'm still 50 <laughs> la, I'm still 50. <gasps> That's huh? insane. Don't, wait, this you is must have rehearsed this. Yeah, okay, we, we know, but still. I didn't know, know. I didn't know. No, I'm I shocked by the kampong part. No internet there. Oh man, the internet Bro, only no like concrete. Yeah. Yeah. But this is no, like, so wooden walls. Oh. Then we renovated the thing to have brick walls. Yeah. Oh. Then from zinc roof, um, right. I think it still remains zinc roof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the kind where like it rains, you really hear it. Uh, when it rains, you have to look out for the leaks. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, okay, like okay. Pockets, uh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Big land, we had so many fruit trees, rambutan trees, we had mango trees, we had papaya, oh. Oh. we had jackfruit. I say it was the best time of my life because we had to come up with our own form of entertainment. Mm. Right. So apart from taking rainwater, mixing with mud and sand to, to like build your own sand castle or mud castles. And the longkang, we were like full boats, paper boats, and we just let them, very simple flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happens to that land after that? So the government took it back. And Do that's they when we buy moved. it back from you or they, they took it back? They took it back. I see, okay. Mm. Yeah, we were renting the place. And we were just like uh, maybe, what, less than 100 meters away from the church. Yeah. My dad also sold drinks in a, in a secondary school. My primary school was just beside the secondary school. So, <laughs> so you never really had to go anywhere. <laughs> I just Yeah, yeah, and we walked yeah. to everywhere. So it was really fun staying in a kampong. I remember then we were going to watch a movie and then my mom and dad were carrying me and my sister with the piggy baggers mm. and we were raised. Very simple pleasures. That's why whenever you hear your seniors say, wow, we need to bring back the kampong, uh, mm. atmosphere that 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 flavor uh, this is what we're talking about just neighbors really being neighbors looking out for each other i remember there's this one time where some of the dogs went crazy and they started to fight and the whole neighbor just came out and like everyone's children's <laughs> wedding all will be invited funeral also all will be invited we were mm. really that kampong spirit is something that is that yeah that i got to experience are you still really in lucky. touch with those no, Maybe. but when my dad oh, no passed, form. when yeah, my dad yeah. passed, a lot of them came to us uh, oh, pay okay. their respects. Oh. Right. Right, right, right. You sound like a man very full of gratitude. And I, I'm so happy and that's so inspiring. And did you feel, do you think you know where that comes from? My best role models until today has got to be my parents. Mm. Wow. So my dad has always led by example, not to say my mom didn't, but a bit more like, <laughs> but because he, the head of the family, so I click with him. My mom sayangs me the most. So the two of them really led by example. I remember since as far back as I can remember, my dad having to get up at about like four in the morning, mm. four to five in the morning. My mom gets up even earlier than him, oh. prepares his breakfast and starts preparing our meals. When she goes to work, she doesn't come back till about like 10 in the evening. Wow. So my dad sells drinks in a school. And back then it was 
that kind where you go in, you make your own ice and you chop the ice into pieces, you cut mm. the fruits and you sell whatever you can to, to make yeah. ends meet. Uh. I remember in a kampong, there will be nights where we are going to put the sao kana, he will buy like wholesale, <laughs> we'll put it into a packet and we'll be there with the candle. I mean, last time there was no... So with the candle, with the flame, and we just have to master the art of sealing it. Uh. So oh. we sell it uh, at the tuck shop. So my dad went through making drinks from syrups, as in putting 10 cents there and you get a drink to the vending machines. So as he got older, I did most of the work. <laughs> <la>. <laughs> but then because... I mean, I, I didn't ask for it, but then my dad sold drinks in a convent school and, and you know, I had to go there and I, I had, there were so many girls there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't like any of Someone, it. Someone. Mm, yeah, but yeah, but it's, it's do tough. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's really tough. But <laughs> yeah. So how many girlfriends you have at one time? <laughs> <laughs> now? <laughs> Dad's way of punishing me, I don't know which book he read or which school he attended was damn effective he would make me kneel down in front of the altar, you know? Whoa. So I, Catholic upbringing, huh? so he asked me, like, so boy, did you go to church today? <laughs> so back so then, not, just not, not yeah, <laughs> by time, right? So like, um, <laughs> sorry, today? <laughs> yeah? Oh, then, okay. So obviously he knows the answer, right? Yeah, yeah. Acting yeah. not so good then. Yeah. <laughs> not fast, you know? Yeah. Say, okay, okay, go and take the cane for me. I said, you, you're the, the mentor. Take the cane for what? <laughs> so I ask you again, uh, did you go to church? This one, I'm buckle in it. Today, uh. Today, uh. Today, uh. Today, I didn't go. I like, like, as if I heard the question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guess like, guess like. Yeah. <laughs> Then confidence lah, like, yeah. no, I'm telling you the truth now, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. no, like, like, because right? uh, I heard the question wrong, that's yeah, why yeah, I said yeah, yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So now I save myself. Anyway, I'm going to kneel down. Okay, put out your hand. I said, why? I just told you the yeah. truth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your name is so fancy though for a kampong kid. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've been called Pierre. Pierre. As in peer pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Second, uh, primary, it's how secondary I call, it's school. It's how I, yeah, <laughs> okay. Or sometimes uh, you can also call me peers. Okay, mm. okay, okay. And, Acceptable. And if you really want to irritate me, you call me Piri. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, I think Pear so, also have. Yeah, like they, they yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a few times, uh, Andrea and I will, will like, uh, we'll queue up and we'll order McDonald's and like, uh, so they recognize us and they'll say, oh, hello, Andrea. And then, hello, Piri. And I'm still like, <laughs> <laughs> do I correct Run you? Do I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so only when I went to the hotel school that I learned <laughs> ah, about yeah wines and all yeah. that so then suddenly yeah. your name helps you oh, yeah. fit right in yes, yeah. are you yeah. the general manager <laughs> <laughs> just a fun tidbit because you mentioned your primary school uh, he also went to uh. St. Gibbs. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I did, I, 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 I did it properly. La. I did both primary and secondary school. Properly so you're saying, in the way, <laughs> yeah. so you're saying those that didn't make it to St. Gibbs secondary didn't, didn't were not it. proper. Yeah. I mean, take it how you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky I like your singing. You're lucky I like your singing. Take it, take it. No, but you must, you must sing memories. Okay, I'll try. Please. Wow. Okay, special yeah, request. This is such a serial <laughs> yeah. no, I was looking at another big question people had for you while you were growing up, right? It was also that a lot of people confused whether you were Chinese because you looked the part, but you can't really speak the language. Yeah. The name like Pierre. I mean, the truth is that you're Poranakan, so yeah. which is I'm not Chinese. <laughs> uh -huh. Which is okay. yeah. yeah. So I'm wondering whether you had difficulty grappling with that growing up. Yes, I remember coming home from school on the verge of tears, and I say, I ask my dad, I say, Hey, what are we? Uh? Wow. <laughs> how come? <laughs> how yeah. come everyone is insisting that I have to speak in Mandarin? How come everyone is? trying to force me to speak in Mandarin. Right. I say, I only do it in school and it's like that, what, three, four hours and come mm. back home, it's all English really, yeah. or dialect. Yeah. So, okay, point. next time anybody gives you a, a tough time, you just tell them you're Baba. Mm. I say, sure not. Will that fly? I mean, yeah. it's like, just <laughs> say I'm Baba. Does that settle everything? I had no idea. <laughs> 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 True enough, I was, I was in a cab one day and a fellow looked through the review mirror and it's like, hey, you, ni shu hua ren ma? And I say, wo shu hua ren. Then which one is the Huayi na me? 
怪怪的，对，因为我是爸爸。等于哦 ，and truth， 你问我说，你你就是 ，you just confuse me， 你是来我找爸爸 ，no 啦 ，taxi driver 医生 ，no，he was like，oh why didn't you say so？That was very funny of you。Thank you, thank you. But okay, but but okay, so I did the little nyonya, right? I was in the little nyonya, and we were in Malacca filming, and so the owner of the of the museum. Rallied all the actors and say, "Oh, you, you Baba, is it?" And I say, "Yeah, Baba. Are you Pranakan?" I'm, "Yeah, lah, Baba Pranakan what?" Mm. Oh. Say no. Mm-hmm. All Babas and Nyonyas are Pranakans, uh-huh. but not all Pranakans are, are Baba. Babas and Nyonyas. Oh, right. Oh. Do you know? Do you understand the difference? Is it the racial mix? Not so much the racial mix, but it's just that okay, Baba and Nyonya. What he explained to me, and I subscribe to that, is. You got to fulfill a few criteria. One is you have to be straight-born Chinese. Okay. Mm-hmm. Two, you have to cook the the cuisine, or you have to eat the. Huh? Mm. Oh, weird way to this. The juhu cha and eat. the yeah, and and the language you speak. Mm. So they they speak this Baba Patwa, which is a dialect, which right. is a bastardized mix of Hokkien, Teochew oh. with Malay. Mm. So the story goes back then. Singapore modes of transport was through ship, right?、Mm. So the merchants come in, they do their business, and when it's monsoon season, they cannot sail back. So they, they have to find entertainment, lah, la,、oh, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the second generation are all called Pranakan because Pranak anak anak is children of the street,、mm. right?、Uh-huh. Okay, so、no. everyone is Pranakan, but the Chinese that wear the sarong that、uh, that infuse the spices from. Uh, the straight、mm. into their cooking because they are not Malays, right? But、mm. then they eat pork,、mm. so they, it's just a mix. And the way they speak, the way they dress, that's the Baba in the Nunya.、Mm. So you are not Baba. Damn, I'm Baba. You are actually Baba. I'm Baba.、Mm. My mom's side comes from Indonesia. My dad's side came from Penang.、Mm. I was born、oh. in Singapore. But do you speak the Baba? Kila, do I speak the Baba? <laughs> can I do the Baba? The the Babarina. Yeah, can, can hear no? I don't know what I don't know what it sounds like. We can take this off air lah. Okay. Be cool lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, oh, oh. Like, like, like even an introduction. <laughs> Understanding that I mean you've struggled with speaking Chinese and all this, and then when you started acting, what then made you go like, oh, my life is not challenging enough. Let me do Chinese drama. Because <laughs> 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 you want all、oh, the English awards. Choice,、yeah. oh, okay. It was not by choice. When I was instructed to do Chinese drama, I'm like, are you you sure you know what you're asking me to do? He's <laughs> like, I'm sure where my level,、yeah. <laughs> where my standard of Mandarin is, but so okay lah. You want me to do it, and I just put in. Put in the hard、yeah. work, and、uh, you know. And back then, the dictionaries were books, huh? Yeah. Were- <laughs> <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> yeah. They were books, okay. <laughs> and you had to find because Chinese character, there's the side, and then there's the, yeah. the yeah. main character. Yeah, yeah. So you find the pumpy and the one. Okay, you find. <laughs> then they ask you to flip to one page, and you flip, 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 flip. Then you find the other side. You match together and、mm. you write the Han and Ping. That's how you did word for word your entire script. Yeah. <gasps> okay. Then only to go onto set and realize that you mix the wrong word. Were、wow. you laughing at yourself like after that? Like especially when you are in a damn serious. Scene. I laugh at myself in, <laughs> in my dreams. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I remember your debut Chinese film was so brutal. Eight days had the greatest time because they I, there's, okay, there's so much what, content. Let, let, me, let me tell you something. Okay, <laughs> what they probably didn't know is they paired me up with Mei Pua.、Mm. That was a Harijun Zai Lai. I think we were supposed to last for eight episodes. But they killed us off. We did. <laughs> it was so bad. It was so bad. They ran out of film. This time. What? No lah. Not a film lah. It was a period drama, and、mm. they dubbed me. Which I say, thank、oh, God, I was not dubbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're not even dubbed you by with you. Ah,、uh. it's not even your voice. <coughs> no, it's not. The you want to spend? Even hard. Funny they have to spend. Okay, so um, yeah, so they dropped the bomb on us. Bomb on us. <laughs> I, I didn't know what to say to Mei Pua. She must hear you. <laughs> They put that much. I swear, it was like at least six episodes. You can't be so poor, boy. Are there differences in in filming like English and like 
Chinese dramas? I would say the culture is very different. Channel 5, we kind of like took our time. All of us were more comfortable in the language. But for Channel 8, uh, no matter how good you are, you still go back home really tired because they shoot close to maybe 20 scenes a day. Oh. Oh. Not rushed, but everything is so well thought of that you go on to set, you just say your lines and right. uh, no discussion. There's no time for anything else. Right, right, right. Okay. So I think like what Irene said, like she was really happy when I come on to set. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone was so happy when I get involved <laughs> in their production because things slow down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jump jump okay, we can <laughs> <laughs> The pace just go down. <laughs> like everyone is so happy to see me. <laughs> I didn't know your Mandarin accent still like that. <laughs> I was under the impression you're very pro already. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I even got so daring that I went to do a Chinese musical mm. in Mandarin, and we ran for like. 46 shows or something. <laughs> yeah. You really don't I, pass but up it's the a same challenge. lines, so you don't need to you don't need to memorize new Yeah, lines, you don't right? have to, but then you see you're on stage and yeah. you know sometimes you get mental block, right? Yeah. Or sometimes Do you, you just, though? I do, of course. Okay. okay. <laughs> do you? I mean you feel it. Okay. <laughs> I missed my cue. So I was supposed to mention four names, and the last name being Mulan's father. Mm. And there was somebody there, the sound engineer would be queuing the sound effects. So I said, I came here, I'm looking for so-and-so, uh, read out the names, the first name, I skipped to the father's name. <laughs> so the guy had to read yeah, from yeah, one yeah. end to the other end just to, uh, to cue <laughs> in the, yeah. that sound effect. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> then, oh, but then I've always had people watching over me and so the artistic director came in behind, oh, congratulations everyone, uh, it's okay. Uh, I mean, it's not a problem, it's not a problem. It's a natural, everyone should be very surprised, everyone should be very natural. Oh, 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 he's oh, really yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I also don't know what he's saying, but okay. He yeah, can go sure. through continuous yeah, sentences, Miss. Yeah. <laughs> so well, I, I've always been very blessed. I've always been very looked after by... by. You see your gratefulness comes through. And that's why. Why, it's damn warm here. I want... <laughs> <laughs> is he, he take out his shirt, keep rolling. <laughs> 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 I remember one of the most beautiful things that I, I learned about you outside of being Pachu Bing was when you had to give up a part of your organ. You gladly wanted to give up a part of your organ. For back then was just a, when you're, you're engaged, yeah. right? Not married yet, I remember. Yeah. Can so, we talk about that? Yeah. Andrea didn't ask for it. Okay. Mm. Okay, so I volunteered myself. And uh, so when they said Andrea was heading for a transplant, uh, I was so naive. I, I was wondering, transplant is in, in what? What does it mean? Mm. The only transplant I knew was like marcotin, you know, where you cut the plant and you just put another plant in fuse mm. and you just <laughs> clip it. <laughs> then of so, oh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh huh. I don't think you can actually put a timeline to when someone is worthy of yeah. you sacrificing your life. All I knew is. And, and I told Andrea this many times, I said, I, I just couldn't see my life without you, mm. right? And fact is I had already proposed to her and I was going to marry her. So mm. I take it like she was already my wife. How long have you been dating up to that point? We were dating for about like maybe three. Okay. Yeah. So long just but not over that long. Years. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And if you know Andrea the way I do, she's just, she's so eloquent. She's so beautiful. Mm. She's so giving. She's so full of life. And I, and I saw her in front of me, she she was just not, she was speaking in half sentences. Right. Mm. Mm. I was not ready to let her go. So this kampong boy did the only thing that he was taught to do, which is to pray. And I just said, dear Lord, let me do whatever I need to do, whatever it takes to keep Andrea alive, mm. to keep her with me. I decided to actually put myself on the donors list and I said, I'll come and get myself tested. So 24 hours, couldn't eat, went in for a blood test, did an angiogram to make sure everything was correct. I failed the first test. Uh, it can fail one, uh. okay. No. Yeah, because when they draw your blood, they know whether you are healthy because the whole operation, the severity or the, the complexity of the transplant is for the donor. Right. Yeah. Yep, yep, because yep, yep. unfortunately, yep. if the person doesn't make it, the person mm. was already They have to take but, what they can. Yeah. yeah, but the person going in healthy without any uh, danger right. must walk out. 
Right, yeah, right, okay. right. I failed it because uh, I was not sleeping. I was not eating well. They said, come back again, go and drink lots of water. Did the same test. I was about to dig into my first plate of fried rice. <laughs> my brother-in-law ran to me and said, stop. Don't eat. The transplant is going to happen tonight. Wow. <gasps> oh, wow. Okay, and first thoughts at that moment. What was it? <laughs> Hungry. <laughs> I, 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 I was really happy and in my heart, I was like, you answered my prayer and mm. whatever that needs to be done. I'm in a hospital. I mean, it's not like you're asking me to go and do how many pull-ups are you asking me to go and like take some mathematical quiz or something. Mm, yeah. I just had to lie down there and you mm. do your job. Mm. I said, okay, let's do it. Mm. So I we, we called, for, uh, I had to go through a few tests. Um, and then we, we got a priest to come in and uh, give me anointing of the sick. Right. And, and that was the time, you know, making your last confession. Yeah. Wow. Oh. I think throughout the whole ordeal, I only cried like twice. I come from a generation where if you are sick, you just go home and sleep. Mm. If you really cannot tan, then you go and see a doctor. Mm. But when you get admitted into the hospital, mm. you sure die on. Okay. <laughs> so you grow up around. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Whoa! Okay, okay, okay. That was all me, not him. Eh? <laughs> just bleep, just bleep. Okay. Okay. From one hospital, the hospital transferred you to another hospital. It's like mm. the hospital gave up on yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Desperate. Yeah. So from one ward to another, and, and I remember just keeping all of Andrea's belongings, her toiletries and all that. And, uh, and my sister called me and she just asked me one question. And throughout the whole thing, it just auto, right? Autopilot. Boy, how are you? Oh, then it just opened the yeah. floodgates and I just, I said, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I, I, oh, oh, I don't know what is going to happen to Andrea. And then I, and then I walked out and my mother-in-law was sitting in front of me and I just cried and I apologized. I said, I'm sorry, I didn't take mm. care of your daughter. I, I, mm. I'm so sorry I, uh, that, it, that Andrea is like that now. At that time where you were a suitable donor, was, was Andrea lucid enough to understand that you were going to be the donor? Yes, because by that time, they had already put her through the dialysis machine. All the buildup in her head, yeah. had, her brain that was swelling had reduced in size and she kept saying no. Right. I said, well, Whoa. you don't have to worry about, there's nothing you can do mm. because they've already identified me as yeah. the, the donor and we're going to go through the transplant. And we look back and she said, the saddest thing is that she didn't get to say goodbye to me. Because mm. we were in oh, separate oh, wards. Christ, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> So sorry. sorry. <laughs> yeah. So she's fine. Hey, everybody, she's fine now. If y'all don't know, she's, she's fine now. Hey, you know. Hey. Wow. wow. Hey. He know gonna, John is the cry. Just gonna sell this. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very curious. Like, and and I don't mean to be insensitive. It comes around the wrong way, right? But as nasty as a fight can be between husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend, right? Like you will feel like you have that chip, you know, like I saved your life or whatever. And you also don't want to use it. Like I, I feel uh, like like most people might have that that feeling or like the other party might feel resentment in some yeah. way. Like, mm. like did that change the dynamic in any way? I'll be brutally honest with you. No, I've never once brought it up yeah. and I've never used it as a bargaining chip. Mm. Or if we were to ever quarrel like, don't forget, uh, yeah. you are here today because of me. Uh. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've always felt there was such a cheap and, yeah. and that's such a useless argument or defense. Yeah. Yeah. If we have our discussions and we have our arguments, we have our fights, mm. it doesn't come up because I find that so mm. lame, that's mm. so yeah. cheap. Yeah. Mm. I mean, cheap I, I did it because I didn't want to lose you. Yeah. And just because we were fighting now, doesn't you think by me throwing out that card is going to yeah. solve anything? No. So it happened and... The, the surgery obviously was a success. What yeah. was what was that like waking up to that? Yeah, so the first thing I woke up, was that a dream, mm -hmm. right? Because we all had crazy dreams before. But I then when, when I wanted to ask for something, I couldn't talk because I was Dubated. intubated. Yeah. So the nurse came up to me and said, Mr. Peng, Mr. Peng, don't talk, okay? You have a breathing tube down your throat, okay? Just slowly, let me remove it. Remove, then, okay, so I could breathe. Then I asked, Where's Andrea? Because that was the first test. Either he says, I'm sorry, or... Yeah. So he said, you want to see Andrea, is it? Then I waited for the second confirmation. You wait, huh? Oh, then I knew. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They drew the curtains and I, I saw the nurse go in to, to wake Andrea. So Andrea <laughs> woke up. <laughs> but I was... She didn't know where she was waiting. <laughs> She just weird. Typical uh, entertainer. Yeah, yeah. 
I should really cut the moment. Yeah. <laughs> but but it was okay because I saw her yeah. and and she was in good hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. That's so beautiful. That was that was such yeah. a that was the Singapore's rom com wow. ending. You know, of, yeah, of yeah. that time. Okay, but moving forward, uh, the liver grows back. The the liver grows back. Uh, and apart from that, uh, be- because she's on uh, immunosuppressants for life, uh, we we can't have kids, mm. right? Uh, and she has to take care of her liver, and her diet has to change, uh, lifestyle has to change. Mm-hmm. We used when we were dating, we would chase the sun. Uh, it was suntan until cannot suntan chow tai. So all that has got to change. Cause she, <laughs> she's more prone to common flu. Okay, all right. Like, uh, Even until now. Yeah, she has to take immunosuppressants right. for How about life. for you? Oh. I take a beer once in a while okay. to make sure that the liver is working. Okay. But I'm also a bit curious because there was another interview where you mentioned that you, there was a health professional that checked you, checked her out and then mm. kind of gave her the all clear. And yeah. you mentioned this, sorry, you said, uh, now we can start making longer term plans. Yeah, okay, so Andrea never wanted to like go and do anything that was long term. Uh, and yeah. the, I think at the back of her mind, she, there was always this fear that what happens if the liver decides to give up or the body rejects the liver. In fact, the first two years were the most important uh, period of her life after the transplant because the body can choose to reject the liver. Mm. There's never been a result that came back without red marker. Right. But just two years ago, it came back all black. Wow. Right. So meaning everything all was clear. going mm. fine. Everything right. was, she was reacting well to the medication. Um, but just just last year, last Christmas, we spent it in a hospital. She almost lost her liver. Uh, her bile duct got blocked. She actually had a very acute reaction and she started to throw out. She ran mm. a fever. She was vomiting. We rushed her to the hospital and, uh, but it was a totally new team right. mm. compared to 20 years ago. And they were very puzzled. They say, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you are going through rejection. All right, but we've got everything under control, but we're very puzzled because usually it happens within the first two years mm. where your body's still adjusting to the new liver. So we spend Christmas Eve, Christmas, leading up to the new year in a hospital and and I was praying really hard and I got a priest to come and bless Andrea and we prayed so hard. And as soon as the priest gave her another anointing of the sick, the next time the doctors came in to see us and said, I don't know what to tell you, but whatever that was blocking it has disappeared. Oh, wow. Amen. And I'm like, are you serious? Is, yeah. Do I tell people this? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to probably think I orchestrated yeah. this, but <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? Yeah. Don't for once doubt the power of prayer and right. the Eucharist. Mm. I'm wondering wow. whether, like having gone through this as a couple, what would you say is the greatest lesson your relationship has taught you so far? Mm. Don't think marriage is going to answer all of your questions or solve all of your problems because it's just going to open up a new <laughs> <laughs> can of worm. Okay? I liken it to, someone told me it's like two different species of trees planted side by side. Mm. You have your firstly different upbringing, you have different needs, you have different wants and you can produce different fruits. So always recognize your partner as an individual that whatever you do for your partner doesn't need to be reciprocated. You Mm. hope, Mm -hmm. fingers crossed. But if it doesn't, you have to accept it. Mm. And the same person that you marry will not be the same person 20 years later. So Mm. to answer your question, Mm. it's just like the sanctity of marriage. If you give it importance, then you will subscribe and you will abide by all the rules. But if you don't, and if you think that it's just a piece of paper, then you will live by another set of rules. There yeah. is no right, there's no wrong, there's only I'm never See, gonna give up. This is the answer up. of love. Mm. You ask other people, it's like, tahan no, tahan, tolerate. <laughs> <laughs> depressing one. Eh. Okay, okay. I like to ask people that I get married for a long time. Eh. What's the secret? Tahan. Eh. Then I'm like, that's what I'm gonna look forward to, uh, tahan. Eh. No, and another thing I've learned also is, whatever you wanna say next, does it matter? Oh. Mm. Okay, That's, is it going to change anything? But will yeah. it feel so good in the <laughs> moment? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> but you, will, you will have to live the repercussions. Yeah. Yeah. The you price will. is too big. But yeah. why the woman cannot be the bigger person? <laughs> <laughs> but do you want to be the bigger person? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Not all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, 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 so,
Okay. Does it matter? So, oh, so yes, it matters. If not, she will never learn. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's your pride. That's your pride. But no, that's me just letting myself. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. The thing is, ask yourself this question. Is love a feeling? Because there are days you don't feel like loving the person. There are days that you feel like crap. Mm. You come back home and you're like, what? You want me to massage your leg again? <laughs> Man. But it is a decision. So speaking of something a bit more lighthearted, <laughs> right? Mm. Yeah. Hollywood. Wow. Wow. How did that happen for you? Crazy rich agent. Okay. So I think in a grand scheme of things, there was a reason why Andrea accepted my liver. Everything, the milestones in, in, in my career have all been Andrea's contribution. Wow. She challenged me to do the musical mm. in Mandarin. And I said, what? Are you mad? She said, just do it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's her challenge. Me. <laughs> so <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, so I, yeah I, I, I listened to her, so I, I, I did it. So Crazy Rich Asians happened when one of her clients, because my wife owns a hair salon, Sang Salon, C-I-N-Q, at Shout Scott out. Square. Shout out to Sang Salon. Let's go. <laughs> Unintentional, but yeah, so it's Scott Square. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you're just starting from. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the customers happened to be part of the recce team for oh, Crazy Rich Asian. No way. Yeah, wow. so we didn't know anything about it. And they, and, and he was asking Andrew, say, why, why doesn't he audition for it? And Andrew said, we don't, we didn't know about it. Mm. So he asked him to send in, he sh uh, send in his show reel, sent it in, asked me to audition for the lead. And was I like, thinking, okay. Oh. So anyway, then after that, the second role they asked me to audition for was for Chris Punk's character, mm. uh, the, the the wedding that was going to be held in yeah, Singapore. Yeah, the one that was getting yeah. married. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Then Times. after that, didn't hear from them. Then I think uh, about a month later, they said they were holding auditions here in Singapore. They wanted to see me for the third time. But this time they wanted me to audition for another role. Mm. And until then, I had not read the book. I had no idea what the other characters oh, yeah. were. <laughs> so I said, audition for Michael Teo. I said, who's this Michael Teo? And so they sent me the script and I was like, wow, well, uh, another character that cheats on his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I, I look like someone? Yeah. Being in, on Channel 8 for so long, uh, it's kind of like a customary practice that when you go onto set on the first day or uh, in the middle or coming to the end of uh, your involvement, you treat them to something eat. Mm. I say, okay, la, you know what? I'll just stop by and I'll just buy some ba you know? Mm. <laughs> so I went in for the audition and I, hey, John, by the way, I, I bought you some uh, rice dumpling. I don't know if you had it. And John is in John Chu. John Chu. Yeah. Character. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank God you brought something for us to eat. We're like, they were about to fly off, but they had not eaten. Right. Mm. So they were happily eating. I don't know whether they were even watching me. <laughs> <laughs> so I auditioned for the role. And All right, then and there, here's the food I'm going to audition now. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Then they're starving. Then they okay, you got <laughs> it. You got <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, on, you go ahead. I did as neutral an accent as I could. Mm. And um, then they said, okay, um, how soon can you get ready? And I said, what do you mean? How soon can I get ready? I mean, you know, you have to take off your shirt, right? Then, yeah. oh, Coco, I didn't read the book, right? <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah, I, I I know, I know. How long are you going to give me? So you um, give you about a month. Wow. <laughs> are you giving me the role? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. suddenly yeah. he's my friend. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You ask so much for what? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, we'll be in touch with you. <laughs> I don't know whether I blew it or not yeah, for asking yeah, me that question, yeah, yeah. but anyway, enjoy the bar song. <laughs> <laughs> Must be Kim Chu lah, this kind of... Yeah, yeah. 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 Because it's a small one. Uh, mm. I don't know who else comes out in this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I went and I said, what? Chia la. Then I quickly went to buy the book I read. <laughs> and, and funny thing is, I interpreted the character exactly how it was written. Oh. Um, that Michael Teo didn't have an affair. Mm. Okay, okay. You didn't read a book, you did. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to, to John Paul's question about the differences between Chinese productions, like Channel 5 production, <laughs> and Channel 8 how, how crazy is it from a Holly, like, you know, from Channel 5, Channel 8 to Singaporean like, to... Yeah, of course, you've yeah, done okay. movies also, but yeah, like yeah. Hollywood movie, was it okay. at all not different? Or same shit. Yeah. Okay, it was the same thing, just bigger. In case you didn't know, I shot just one shot of a scene in Singapore, everything else was in Malaysia. Mm. Yeah, right, right, right. And it was the first time I was in a car that I saw the, because the car had to move forward and backwards so many times. First <laughs> time being in a car that I could see 
a planned view of the car. Oh, right. It was in a Rolls Royce. I'm like, how cool is that? So, <laughs> and the fellow goes into reverse. It's a top bird's eye view of the car. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, now yeah. it's common. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. but yeah. my BYD also have. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing, right? And it's like, so I just had to step out of the car, slam the door, and walk off. That was yeah. the only scene I did in Singapore. How, how many yeah. things was that? Two. Wow. I mean, a simple oh, scene. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. As yeah. in, I've done many more takes <laughs> in other shows before. So they blocked the road for 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, uh, you give them one more for <laughs> alternative. So for safety. No, for a full day. <laughs> give you wow. options. Full day, but then they have to do rehearsals and they have to like, uh, kind yeah. of like blocking and everything. Yeah. 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 And just seeing how they work is, is amazing. It's like, everyone has got a job. I mean, in Singapore, <laughs> everybody knows. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah, not yeah. everyone is. No, yeah. but everyone is so specialized in what they do. Right. Yeah, 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 right? Okay. So, sorry, I didn't elaborate on that. <laughs> <laughs> everyone wears one hat. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and it's like, this person don't even touch the lights because the lights belong to me. If you can move oh. the light, that means there's no reason to hire me. Oh. Mm. In Singapore, everybody knows because we're all like a family kampong. Mm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want the ship here? Okay, then you know, you yeah. don't even do that. Oh. Right. So in one day, I did the start and the end of my show. Oh, my book out on the same day. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're so confused. I was so, I was so stressed she out because I held day. on to a Paul Newman Daytona in my oh. Vintage, huh? Wow. One of a kind. And I was balancing a glass of wine and I had to make out to Gemma Chan. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, like, talk about like stressing yeah. yourself out. What a day. <laughs> the watch came with a bodyguard. Oh yeah, we yeah. imagine. Yeah, yeah. How do you explain the day to your wife? <laughs> 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 no, but but yeah, when, when you're so in a new environment, I mean, it's it's hard to get yeah. stimulated by other things. Yeah. Like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, trust me. Yeah. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> John was surprised to find out your age just now, but you've recently turned 50. Yeah, I mean, wow. last year you turned 50. Yeah. And to celebrate, you actually had a fundraiser, which is perhaps yeah. not the most common way to celebrate as well, right? Because yeah. you've been involved in charity work over the years. Like I think even throughout COVID, you and Andrea were, you know, giving up food yeah. and working. Yeah. You did a collab with Willing Hearts and all that. So yeah. I'm curious, like going forward, right? What are some of the social issues that you kind of have your pulse on and you want to focus more on? Mm. I've always liked to pray. And one of the things that I pray for whenever I I say the rosary is I pray for those who have taken their own lives. Mm. So is that this t-shirt that you brought for? Is that this cross? Is this the one? Yeah. So at this point of recording, uh, speak. Is only one week old. Okay. Oh wow! Okay. okay, so speak sense for suicide prevention through empathy, awareness, and kindness. Mm. Mm. So we, uh, me, and a few like-minded friends feel that among the youths, one is too many, lah. One too mm-hmm. many, and this is a ground-up initiative, and we hope to spread the word and kind of like uh, give youths a, a more deeper and and happier understanding of what mm. life is. And so how can, can you reach out to speak? Because it's only one week old, I will furnish you guys with the Instagram account okay. and the line uh, the messaging help oh. wow, line for now. them to, to communicate with us. We need to be more aware of each other's feelings. We need to be more sympathetic. Yeah, We need to bring back that kampong spirit and we need to speak out. If, you, if you're feeling something, say it mm. and then only people will know how to help you. Yeah. I think we need to empower our youth to discover themselves and keep on fighting. Okay, so I think we've come to the end of today's episode and it was an especially meaningful one. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much, Pierre, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's the best podcast the best. ever! Oh. <laughs> like, share, last episode. <laughs> oh, like, share, subscribe. We might not see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> People actually don't know how you're met. Hmm. <laughs> like people have no idea. Hmm. And that's what I wanted to ask because we, she was an actress back then. So I yes, was going to ask whether you're met on set. she was hosting a, a TV program about cars. And me oh. and Gamit, we were Portugal, right? So we were sponsored by this hair salon. And then we will go there, <laughs> get free haircut. Portugal was sponsored by hair salon makes a lot of sense. You know, but then he's, that's a wig, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so once we were waiting for our haircut, and then she walked out. I tell you, when she walked out, her hair bouncy and I still remember it was curly. So that was my first encounter with her. So what's the move? 
What do you think yeah, is what, uh, so what <laughs> give me a pro tip, give me a pro tip. I know King Hua and Lim Yu Bing, right? Uh-huh. So Andrea did a stage play with them and it was the last performance. I went backstage to say hello to King Hua and uh, my mentors and she was there. So they introduced. Nice. When I met her, she was the first girl that made me want to go through that whole courtship. Okay. Right, oh, right. Wanted to get to know her mother, wanted to get to know her life. What was it that she liked about you? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> so you see his body and I. You see his face and I. You see his body. And of course, you as a person. Wait, is it reverse? Reverse, we need to make a video.